Okay. I'm recording at the end of everything here because I just had a thought of, did I really do a good very introduction? A very good introduction? Probably not. You're about to go on a journey, if you watch the whole thing, in which I am attempting to repair a computer mouse, one that is kind of near and dear to me, that I really liked and have used for quite a long time, and it broke, and I needed to replace some parts on it, and I'm not good at soldering, which is a major component, what it will take to fix this mouse. Enjoy. You're joining me on a Saturday afternoon where I'm taking the time to work on a project. The project I'm going to be working on is fixing a mouse. This mouse is the Razer Naga Trinity. I recently featured it in a video that won't be out for quite a while. It was my favorite mouse for a good long time. Um, I really liked this. It was the most expensive mouse that I ever bought. And typically, whenever I would buy a mouse, it would be non-existent. I would buy the mouse that came with the computer. And then I bought this. This was like 80 or or $100. So I was taking a bit of a gamble there. But it paid off. I really liked this mouse for several years. And then it stopped working so well. And I started looking up to figure out what was going on with it. And I tested and troubleshoot and do all kinds of things and make sure that it's not the fact that the plug is plugged into a hub. I took it out of the hub, plugged it straight into the computer. I thought, oh, well, for this video, I can real quick sit down at the computer and plug it in and show the issue. And it's not really doing it now, which is fun. But I don't trust it. I don't trust that it won't come back. And then when I don't have the time, like I do on a Saturday afternoon, I can take it and fix it. And I really would like to be able to use this mouse again. So I've already started here, uh, taking it apart. Let me show you, because I have second phone. And second phone will be the close-up shot, and unlike the last time that I did this, it will be, hopefully, in focus on what I'm doing. So I've got myself set up here. I've got uh, something to put down because it's just white underneath. I, it, technically, this is two... Two mats on top of each other instead of just the desk, but the one underneath is white, and what good does that do if it's so blinding with the lights coming down? So I threw down the brown one, so at least we'd be able to see. Uh, the problem, from what I've been able to find about this mouse, which I have begun taking apart, I've taken the screws out to start with, and then I did that the other day to make sure I was ordering the right switches, and then after I got the switches, I realized, well, put it back together to try to test it a minute ago except for putting the screws in. I've tried it without the screws. Um, and then I thought, well, if I'm going to do it, why not make a video out of it? And I can just talk through what's going on. So I bought some more switches, which are hopefully similar, and this will be an experience. A very interesting experience. The left one's the one that has gone. It still clicks, and it's not the most common issue, which is the double-click. Um, for this... We're jumping subjects. We'll start working on this in a second, but since I'm still hand-holding this and I want to put it down, um, this is a pillow that came off of a headrest from an old computer chair that I no longer have. I have an iFixit kit here with all the things. I've used this many a time in order to repair things. I am looking at the iFixit guide on my laptop. I have some cheap soldering iron. I'm going to have to do soldering, which I'm not super comfortable with, so that'll be interesting. I don't think I'm going to need too many other things over there, but that's basically what I'm working with as far as a setup goes. Now I can flip the camera around to front-facing. Put you down here. And put you, like, maybe there-ish. That allows me to show off here. Yes, okay. And now we can do picture in picture for the rest of this. So, I purchased the switches. What is going on with it? The reason that I stopped using it several years ago, I looked it up. It's now been three years since I last used it. I don't know if I have scissors in here. I need to open this bag. Do I have a knife? <laughs> you would hope. 
I'm prepared. I'm probably going to need a flashlight. I don't know if I'm going to need any of these screwdrivers. If I can't hold the flashlight, I have a headlight. I have an exacto. I can cut this open. Cool. So what started happening with it after a couple years of playing, Path of Exile especially, and then editing, and it was mostly during editing at that point. I bought it. I bought a replacement mouse, just another one. I really like the premium brand of Razer. I'm not super thrilled to it, but they do make good stuff. They have, of to date, the best RGB software that I have ever used to customize. Um, it's still a hassle, but of everything, it is the best one that I have used. Interesting. Oh, it actually is by Razer. Hmm. Cool. Well, that's good, because it's going in a Razer. The Amazon listing that I bought these from just had all kinds of stuff on there. Apple. Logitech. Lots of mice brands. Unlock the ribbon connector that is held down by the mainboard clips using the spudger's pointed end. Okay, so they want me to take it off from down there. I don't know. Do I need the spudger? I think I just need to... No, well, maybe not. It's a different type of ribbon clip than what I'm used to. I'll do my best to show what it is that I'm doing. And yet, at the same time, I'll go ahead and tell you this is not a guide on how to fix your own mouse. This is me just playing around and hoping to fix a mouse. Um, look it up on the guide for my fix it. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this all the way before. I've gotten it to the point when I started having issues with it, and I still haven't talked about what the issues were. There goes those. And then the... There we go. That comes out. And then, next step, the issue that I had. Remove the side housing. I've already done that. Remove the LED 3-pin connector. Um, the issue that I started having with it is clicking and dragging. Now, apparently it's pretty common, and I saw several threads of people who were like, I only had this mouse for a short amount of time. I had to do a return, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I bought mine far enough back that the warranty wasn't still active, and I was not going to pay more money on top of this expensive mouse. So I just got another one and figured I'll deal with it later. I tried cleaning it. I have taken it apart before to pretty much this point in order to try and clean the thing and determine if there was anything bad that could that has happened. And it is basically, there's the top half completely separated. It is the switches that have gone bad. The issues that I have more, most commonly with this mouse, apparently, you get double clicks. And that's partly what I'm getting, but not so much, because it's not that I click once and it registers two clicks, which is apparently very common for computer mice to happen. What I get is when I'm clicking and dragging, it'll stop dragging halfway through. It'll unclick itself. I get that frequently. Although, again, apparently not right now, because I've just plugged it in and it wasn't doing it. Still going to replace the switches. Remove one 4mm black Phillips screw from the t from the left side of the mouse holding the screw. Okay. It says it is a triple zero, so tiny, tiny little thing. And they want me to pull it off from the left there, then pull the LED controller board upward and out. Okay. Okay. Where's the LED controller board? So here comes this tiny screw. I see another tiny screw on the other side. Very nice little parts tray here for things to go in. The LED controller board. Oh, I see. Oh, they actually said that. Oh, wait. They want this one. Whoops. Okay. Yeah, it did say a black screw. So the silver one goes here. Keep everything nice and organized in the parts tray so I remember where things go. Then they want me to pull this up and out. Oh, okay, I see. So the LEDs in the scroll wheel are here. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. And this part comes off. 
which will require the tweezers to get down in here, won't it? Pull up on here, make sure I don't need to click thing. I did think that this would be an opportunity once I get going here to start doing catching up on personal blog because it has been a minute. But this requires all of my attention at the moment, so I'm just going to continue working on it. Come on. Come out of there. Maybe this will be easier once the board is off the... Then again, maybe it won't. Hmm. It almost seems like it's not coming up. I know you cannot see this. And that's, again... Oof fact that I'm just trying to do it myself and not just instruct other people. I don't know what I'm doing. It says to pull this up. I don't want to pull it by the cables because that will... Yeah, I don't... All right. Well, I'm just going to leave it right there. Upwards and out. Well... Nope, it stays on in the next photo. Pry and remove the scroll wheel feedback bar from its hold down clips using the hook end of a halberd spudger. Is that what this is called? Oh yeah, I guess so. Because it's got the the blade that where's the camera on this? It's right here. Focus. Yeah, okay, focus. Well, it has a bit of a tip to it. Anyway. Where am I supposed oh, this? Try and remove the scroll wheel feedback bar. Man, this is more complicated than I expected it was going to be today. Okay. There's that. Oop! All right, that's popped up. That goes step number three. All right, that's out. Next thing, remove the spring. Oh, nope, there's another spring right here that needs to come off. Well, it did already. Cool. Hopefully. Yep. Okay. I got two springs there, and I hope that that's an easy thing to put back together. I didn't see where it went. Move, wiggling the connector upwards. Oh yeah, this is just one of these. One of these that I can't really get to. Let's use the other tweezers. Anyway. Very much reminds me of taking apart my 3DS in order to put it back together. But hopefully this goes better. Come on. I especially noticed the issue when I was editing more so than gaming, because you click and drag an awful lot when you're like, I need to put this video clip on this timeline, and then this thing over here, and it got to be the point where it was unusable. Hence, well, I got a new mouse, although it doesn't have all the features. All right. Wiggling the connector upward. Sure thing. It's out now. Pry the black bracket holding the scroll wheel in place until the scroll wheel housing pops up. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Where am I prying it? Oh, I see. This part needs to go here, and then this, and then this. Okay, yes. And then this piece comes off. Cool. That is a scroll wheel removed. Moving on. Now the micro switch. No, that's just the step. Why did I put the name there? Anyway. Remove the USB Type A to 5 pin connector from the main board by pinching and pulling upwards. Okay, so this is where this thing comes into here, I guess. And then goes under and comes around to here. Can I just do this with my hands? This is a much bigger. No. What about this? There we go. There we go. Now it's coming. 
Okay, that's off of there. Now, remove the four screws. Okay, so now we start removing these silver screws. And that lead is going to that. Here's hoping I'm not breaking this mouse. Because I really like it. But I haven't touched it in three years. Okay. Now we're onto the soldering part. Because this piece is going to come up. Here's the whole board. And this can stay here because it runs in the track. Very nice. Cool. I can actually show that. The mouse cable goes in to here, and then it's got a nice little track that it runs down around there, and that's what I unplugged from the board, and it needs to be cleaned because it is dirty. Cat hair in my mouse. Because, of course, it gets everywhere. How? I don't know. But it does. It sure does. The only thing I don't have to replace, and I think if I get this working and this becomes my main mouse again, which is what I would like to do, um, Project Nadia, Nadia, Nadia T2. I don't know what that means. So maybe a manufacturing code, sometimes they put stuff like that in there. Okay. Now, soldering. Place the tip of the soldering iron onto the micro switch contact pins. Work around the micro switch pins while pinning the, the switch with an opening pick. Then, once that's off, remove and replace the micro switch. Solder all three micro switch pins with soldering iron. Ensure the micro switch is bonded by performing a tug test. And then put it back together by going in reverse. Okay, here we go. This is a super cheap soldering iron that I got. I would like to replace it one day, but the chances that I use it for are very, very slim. I mean, the opportunities that I solder is not very often, so it's hard to justify spending a good bit of money on it. But it is cool. I can go ahead and switch out the tip, though, because I won't need this one. I'll need a tiny one. This is the big boy. The last thing I was soldering was the broken TV that I found by the dumpster which I was unable to successfully fix. That was because I found out the daughter board was fried on it, and it would have required replacing, which would have cost money. And since I got it for free from the dump, I recycled it instead. Okay, that's back together. That's there. That goes there. Where are the screws to the... They're attached. Okay, cool. Move my daughter board over here. I don't know why I called this one specifically the daughter board. I don't think that's exactly accurate. I wish I could move this camera back just a little bit, but I really can't. There it works. I feel like it, it doesn't actually fit through this hole, does it? It's not, only fits through this one. Anyway. Personal vlog with personal things. What have I been up to? I was playing Starfield this morning. I currently am making pizza dough. That's in the fridge going until dinner which I started at like 8 in the morning, so not quite 12 hours should be enough time for it to ferment and develop its flavor, I hope. Gosh, I would like it better. Soldering iron. I got it right. Nope. Because it doesn't stay upright. I don't think so. Does it go this way? I guess it goes this way. And then the little pad fits in the back. Something like that. Like I said, cheap little thing. 
pardon me, while I come over here and plug this in. The mic isn't coming with me because there's not enough room. Making pizza and making bread. Switch on. Lights on. Set the temperature dial. Give it a minute to heat up. Mmm. Mmm. I see the problem here. Switch it back off and move the fan. So hopefully give me some more room. Because I can't turn the fan on anyway. That's better. I'm right-handed, so I'm trying to make sure I have enough proper room before I start working on this. All right, now that's going to heat up. I have a little bit of solder here, I suppose. Soldering. Um... Been playing a lot of Starfield. That's a fantastic game. Um, got a got a new ship just yesterday, and so I started putting that into commission today. And I'm really not so good at the com the ship combat, but I haven't put any points into it. So I also have a feeling that's part of it. But it's expensive to. I mean, I'm now. Level 26, so it takes me a bit to level up, so I can't just pump things into it. And as far as I've seen, there's no way to, like, reset the points. As far as I've seen. But I'm really enjoying that. I'm still working through Dark Souls. Um, I do that every weekend for a couple hours. Um, I think that's pretty much all I'm playing right now. I've been watching... I just finished Peaky Blinders. Fantastic show. I'd never seen the final season. I saw the other seasons, but I never actually got to watch the final one. So I finally watched that. And then Battlestar Galactica is what I started last night, which I haven't seen in not quite 20 years, but it's close. And considering Starfield kind of doing a whole thing here, spaceships and that kind of stuff. This is going to be important, and the images I'm sure will show it as well, but the switches, which are the same ones here, right? They have a different number on them, but they are the same, like they have a different, I assume, production number on them. They, these ones are both, yes, because the actual model number is a D2FC-F-K50M. RZ, and that's the same number on both the new ones that I got, which also on the top say Razor Omron. So they should be good. It's only the left one. The right one has never been bad, but uh, if I'm doing one, I might as well try and replace them both, right? Get this whole mouse a refresh. I'll clean up the board here, because it definitely has some... I never spilled anything on this, but it does have a bit of schmoo and cat hair, because cat hair gets everywhere. In fact, do this right now. Um, been reading a new book, which has been fun. I can't remember who recommended it to me. Um, I tried to look it up, and I couldn't find any information in any of the history of my chats. Uh, called the Seven Blades of. No wait, is it Seven Blades of, of in Black? Maybe. I don't remember. Sorry, I don't remember because it's been a while since I looked at it last, yesterday. But I haven't seen the title in a bit. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it's Seven Blades in Black, and I'm pretty sure the author is Sam Sykes. I'm, I'm like, you know, quarter of the way through it, and I like it so far. It's pretty good. All right, this seems significantly hot. So you can turn it down a little bit. What temperature does... What... Temperature. 
the solder melt. Soft sol solder typically has a melting point range of 90 to 450 degrees Celsius. Is this thing in Celsius or Fahrenheit? This is Celsius. Alloys that melt between 190, between that and 450. Well, it goes up to 450. I said to 350, which is the first, like, it's indicated in red. But they're also, like, talking about the type of solder, which I don't, there's a lot that I don't know here. I'm very much an amateur and probably should not be doing this because I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning. And I've yet to melt anything that bad. So, there goes nothing. All right, we are going to clear the work area a little bit, move you up there, we're going to move you over here. I don't need to do the soldering yet. We are just unsoldering right now, so we're going to put that there, and we're going to move my... Yes, yes, move that over there. All right, here we go. Here we go. The last thing I soldered successfully was some XLR cables. Yep, not hot enough. Bump it up a little bit. Work for a second. That's typically how I've done all this, is just by by feel. Put it on there, see if it starts melting the solder, and when it doesn't, bump it up. It's a very clean solder job as opposed to what will be on here after, which I promise you will not be. So reading a new book, playing the games, been working through all the stuff. I've recorded a bunch of new content that's set to come out soon. I'm pretty excited that I've been working on that. Come on and melt. All right. Maybe it is harder solder. If I need a different soldering iron after all this time, it would not surprise me, but it would depress me. So I don't really have the money to buy a better soldering iron at this point in time. I've been wanting to get one, but that doesn't mean I have one available to me. Oh, smell the solder now. I guess I'll smell the heat coming off of it. Come on. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that solder to come up as I am trying to wiggle this thing all around. And nope, still pretty well in. Keep trying. Turn it and come at it from the sides. Definitely do better if I had had a plug on the right hand side of me in order to put the soldering iron, but I'm afraid I don't in this setup. And this is far better of a setup with all my tools here than it would be to try to do this out in front of the light table. It would look better with the camera set up, and I wouldn't be using phones for anything here. But it most definitely would not. Uh, function better. For the fact that I have all of my tools in here and such. I need my tools. Whoop! Slipped a little bit, touched the rubber mat. That's not what I want to do. I 
still feels pretty solid. <laughs> oh boy, I'm going to need like more hands for this. I don't really have a vise that I can put this in because really I'm going to need to be able to touch it like that and then pull it out. So I guess I'm going to have to start gripping it from here. Do I have anything that I can... I do have this. Are these broken still? No, the super glue seems to have worked well. This is another pair of tweezers, like reverse tweezers almost, that will pinch, that broke um, on me at some point. But if I do that and they stay, they seem to be staying pretty well. If I can do that and hold them, that gives me more of a grip. It still doesn't really apply pressure the way I want to, actually. So this really doesn't do what I needed to at this point in time. I need to be able to pull on it and wiggle on it while applying the soldering iron. Because the solder, I can see, will melt a little bit and then solidify again before I can pull the, the switch out. Just going to have to go a little at a time. Just a little wiggle, a little melt, a little wiggle. Will melt until it comes out. I really wish I could get all the way down in there, but I don't have the finest of tools with this cheap little soldering iron. That's not doing me any good, is it? It is not helping. Switch that to clear, heat that up. Oh, there we go. That moved to switch a little bit. I applied a little bit of pressure to one side. Here we go. That was something. Did didn't come apart, but it was something. I saw that. Hmm. <laughs> I saw it solidify and I watched it. It's so small. It's not like this big old drop of solder is on there. It's just this little bitty amount. Come on. But it's down in the crack where I really can't get to it. Again, I'm going to have to switch out tips, aren't I? I think so. I just think that thing's got a big rounded tip to it. And if I were to use one like this that has a point, I could actually touch the point in, in there. That's unfortunate. I switched it out thinking that I was making a better choice, and I guess I am not. Mm. Have I melted the tip to this? Or is that solder on there? No, I think I've actually melted the tip here. That's interesting. Maybe, maybe don't buy a super cheap kit like this. Maybe you want something with some quality to it. I actually have to turn it off in order to swap the tips out. Of course you do, because I'm not going to touch it while it's hot, so it needs to cool. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. I was hoping that this would be at least a little bit easier than what it is turning out to be. Because you don't want to apply too much heat. I know that. I know if you do too much, you can melt things around it, like the board itself. 
you really want to direct that heat. I can't clean off some of this. Flake away a little bit of the, the solder itself. But all the schmoo that is around it. Anyway. Reading books, recording videos, that's mostly what, I, what, I, what I've been doing every weekend. This is the first weekend in a bit where I'm totally taking off, except for, well, now I'm recording this, and I do have some editing to do. So I guess I'm not really taking off at all. <laughs> nope, that's still hot. Probably gonna take a while to cool down then. Now, isn't it? Sigh. Le sigh. There is a little hole on the switch that I could pry into if I needed to. But I don't really want to do that. I'm making bread. I'm making pizza. I think I'll make gumbo soon. I like gumbo. Um, What else have I been up to? I went out the other weekend and shot some more stuff. I did some at-home shooting things. Um, I've really been pushing some new series that are coming out. Um, pushing to myself to record, I should say. Is that too low? Just wanted a slightly better. Although I guess if I'm doing picture in picture, where's that gonna end up? Gonna end up over there. Where it's been probably the entire time. Which is here. I'm just trying to fill time while I wait for this to cool down. This is metal, and this is metal. Oh yeah, I could do. I can do an unscrew and a screw using tools, and then put this down here. There we go, and then put the new one on. And put this back. I think you can actually see what I'm doing, but I've removed one tip. I am screwing on the other. There we go. Make sure it's good and tight so I don't touch it with my fingers again. And turn this on. Crank that up. Let it get a little hot here. Because I think this tip... will work a little better if it will focus. Not great at focusing up close, mobile phones. Which, fair enough, they're, you know, not a macro lens. Got to take a few minutes for this thing to come to temperature. What else have I talked about? The last time I was recording a personal vlog, I was setting up to record a bunch of things. Now I have recorded a bunch of things, and I have... I'm almost caught up on all the editing. 
I actually managed to get through, I recorded a batch of videos last weekend, which I talked about, um, because the mouse was one of them. The mouse was part of one of them. And it had me boot up one of my favorite old games. Not old. One of my favorite games, Path of Exile. And reminded me how much fun I had with it, and that I really would like to play it some more. Which reminded me that I have a mouse that's been sitting here untouched, unused, for more than three years. And the reason for that is because... The switch needs replacing. And hence, what we are doing today. Hopefully, this is going to work with me here and come out. A little soldering thing. Instead, I'll jam it into. Uh, at least we have two mats down here. I can see the solder melt. I can watch it melt around it, but it dries up so quickly and it solidifies again so quickly, which is what you want with solder, but how am I supposed to remove this thing? Especially because it's three points, three solder contacts. I mean, that good quality, right? It means that it'll last and it'll really stay on there once you get it in, but... It also means that it is extremely difficult to remove if you don't know what you're doing. I don't. If we can't wipe off some of that solder and get some. I wonder how big the holes are here underneath. Like how much of this is the solder? I can definitely see that we're making some progress now, because I can see little bits of solder all around the metal. Yes, yes. Maybe if I come at one point on both sides. Burning the mat that I am using. Now, did that burn? What just heated up? Hmm. Now I'm concerned I've bumped something else. Like the edge of this plastic while I was working. And then I just bumped my finger against it. Where'd that brush go? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. I mean, besides me kind of scraping the circuit board a little bit, I really haven't done anything to it. And yet I can definitely see a difference between what I've done with what, what we've done to one as opposed to the other. All righty, come on now. I just need to heat this up, right, like that. All of that right there, and get it on this side. Heat that up, and then remove this. Hmm. 
where there's still some here. Like on the sides that I have to hit. There's definitely solder coming off. I can see it. I'm wiping it off here. But like I am removing some. But as it turns out, those tiny little neat little dots of solder are actually quite a bit more than I expected. I think they really put it down into this hole here. Looks like cool. Come on. Come on, give me a little bit of leeway here. Just show me something for my effort. Let's know if this is working at all. I'm getting nothing. Nothing, I tell you nothing. If I had some kind of little vice thing, mount that into it and pinch it down here. I just don't have anything like that, do I? Closest I've got is this, which I could use to pinch the board and hold it, but it's not going to be enough to hold it upright to the point where I can be prying on one side while soldering from the other. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work, is it? Damn. Man. A shame. A shame. Why are the front edges of this, like, plastic? circuit board. Why are they uh, jagged? Come on. Whoops. That was a big dent. Whoops. All or nothing. And then by the time I get this to wiggle, it won't come out. It's solidified. Come on. I have a heat gun, but if I use a heat gun, I'll heat the, the entire thing up, which doesn't do me any good. There's a little bit of wiggle to it now. I've got it just a little bit. All right, just keep working on it, I guess. I'm not going to be able to get this thing back. Like, as well soldered as this, I can tell you right now. Where does this make contact with the... Oh, these points must be the contact. These holes here. Ooh, that's going to be interesting when it comes to re-soldering this. I don't think the guy does anything here. It just says... Yeah solder all three points doesn't really talk about oh if i looked at the guide enough they actually do have a little solution here it's useful and helpful they suggest using this 
Oh, there is not enough room here, though. Man, this thing is, like, right on it. Hmm. But, yeah, one of these little picks to put into there so you can apply pressure while you're soldering it. But now... Are they touching the whole pin there? Zoom in on that. Are they taking the whole thing down? That can't be right. This won't melt. This is the whole pin here. You got solder around this. Do you heat up the pin? They're like the... What appears to be happening on the image here I zoom in? No, I don't think they're... Yeah, what's happening here? I wish you had a macro lens. Yeah, they're just touching it on either side, but they are using this plugged in between the two here in order to apply pressure. And I just can't get mine down in there like that. Hmm. <laughs> How can I do this? Well, I've always had better luck when it comes to things with the metal, but the metal is thicker. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get that down under there, and that's going to probably break something. All right, man. Here goes nothing. Just keep trying. See, the switch is moving now. I mean, the the pin is moving, which tells me that the solder is fully heated up around it, right where the pin can move, but it's not coming out. And it's very difficult considering there are three of them that I'm going to be able to get three of them. It seems like they were just reaching down in there with this. It's heated up. Ow! Ow, that heat transferred onto this pick. But it has definitely moved. I can see. Oh, it has moved. Oh, oh, oh it has. Not enough to come. Oop. That's not what I want to have happen. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Go back. Go back together. That's the opposite of what I want to have happen. I need to remove this entire switch. Not just the cover to the switch, which I have seen some people do while repairing theirs. They just pop that switch off and mess with the spring that's inside of there. But for me, I need to replace this entire thing. To replace this entire thing. We are definitely making some progress. I highly doubt you'll be able to see. It's now kind of angled because I've I've been able to pry just a little bit underneath it. Just get that 
just a little bit more, and I'll really get a good grip and root it right off. Where the metal is. A little more dangerous. Where's breaking things go? Breaking is the opposite of what I want to happen here. Come on. Come on. Just need you to kind of balance like that while I put this here. Nope. You to just kind of balance like that. Oh. Uh, Definitely getting somewhere. Definitely getting somewhere. Come on. Stay in there. Every time I've gone to solder something, I've had the same thought, which is, man, I wish I had three arms. Date. Calmly and carefully. A little bit at a time. Don't want to rush it. We don't want to force anything. We don't want to break anything. We just want to very carefully, cautiously work this out of here to the point where it comes out. A little at a time, just a little at a time. Right where this can be removed. Just a little at a time here. There's definitely a gap there. There's a noticeable gap there, and I can get that metal piece right in there. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, well, I felt something. Something started giving way. Something started giving way here. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we are getting somewhere. We need to loosen these bits a little bit more. Wipe this off. Make sure that we are keeping it relatively clean, I assume. Slowly and carefully, break the solder. Break the solder. Yeah, we're getting. We are seeing something here. Come on. Um, work with me here. Work with me. Work with me. Just, just work with me. Come on. Well, that's that. Need to apply just a little bit of pressure by twisting the board with one hand so that it applies a little bit of pressure to the metal spudging tool in order to get it to come up. All right, a little bit off. How does anyone do this for a living? Man. Yeah. 
This is nuts. I definitely never soldered anything this small before. I think I said the last thing I really tried soldering was some XLR cables, which is very big and basic, and all you're doing is just just making a connection between some wires with a bit of solder. And even at that, it didn't really like I didn't get the best job off of that. The ones that I was doing. Come on. Come on. Okay, we're so close. We're right there. Just. Just a little more. Oh, where the odds is mouse is even going to work again. Were there traces run here before this? There are. I hope they still work. I mean, pretend I know exactly how that works. Ah, come on. Man, really in there. I have pillow that I've not been using. I specifically got it because I figured my arm would need it after this time. And then I forgot to use it. And then my arm starts getting tired. Blah. There we go. And then it gets in the way, so that's why I'm not using it. Okay. We're getting there. We're definitely not going backwards in progress. We are there. We are applying pressure pressure so that it will come out. There's a nice piece of solder that just came off. That's what we want. We want this solder to just kind of flake away, revealing what is beneath, which is these little pins, these little switch pins that just need to come out. Just come right out. Just come right out. Not looking great. The look of the the board itself around it is what I'm worried about. Because I don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the reason they do this, like the solder melts at a specific point, that way the board itself won't, right? Like, that's smart. People who are smart design these things. Come on. Right there. Oh, it's right there. Oh, we've got we've got two pins nearly out. Oh, we're making progress. Come on. Come on. Wiggling it on the table now. Oh, it's going back in. No, 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 no. Wrong way, wrong way. Wrong way, shouldn't have done that. Continue the prying, continue the, this motion. Continue to pull it out. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on out of there. Yeah, you were so close. You were right there. A nightmare. Get out of there. I don't want to buy another mouse that is this much money. I just want to use the one I have. Oh, oh come on. Come on. 
There. What and why did it require that? Will you focus? You focus on something close? No? I didn't think so. Will you focus on something close? What if I tap? No? What if I not mess around and make sure hot things that are still on are cool? Okay. Well, that looks objectively terrible from the back. Um, really scratched up. But it's off. And the bad one is coming over here. Now, we talked about before, it goes in like this. And we talked about putting in two new ones. And that plan has changed. Because it's now been an hour and five minutes. I'm not doing that. It has a level on there. I really like this camera for that. And then I try to sit over here so that that side of the screen can have the thing. Something I should have done not an hour ago. Okay. Now, this is full of solder. And I have to open it up in order to put the new pins in. Don't. There's a little bit of a hole there. It goes in like this. And at least three just fit right down in here. You wanna? Oh, one's going in. I'm actually afraid that the other tip would be better now because it will be a straight down end and not trying to go at it at an angle. This has been fun in soldering. Ah, can you tell I have basically no experience soldering? Ensure the micro switch is bonded by performing a tug test. Yep, I'll get there. I will get there. Now, interestingly, they're replacing the right one on this image in this guide. But my left one gets far, far, far more use. Far more use. Is there anything else I needed to talk about? Was there anything else I needed to talk about here? Not really. That's what I've been up to lately. This. <laughs> Welcome to Adventures in Soldering. It's fun. No, not really. I'm not a fan of soldering. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never really had good instructions on it. Well, okay, I've never taken the time to look up good instructions on how to solder. I have looked up before how to solder, but it was just a quick one. Am I doing this right while in the middle of trying to solder something and then looking up and they go, yeah, this is the basic concept. You use this, you touch this thing to here, it heats up and then your solder goes like this. And I went, okay, I guess I am doing it more or less right. And that's as far as I've ever gotten in trying to learn how to solder. So it's a real learn-by-doing type of situation. Just grab it and go. Now, you have the other tip in, which is a round tip. I think the round one will work out better here. I'm going to try to get this thing back here like this. Just give it a second, let that heat up. 
then I can use that to touch what's there, and open up the hole a little bit, push the switch pins, all three pins up into there, and then top them off with solder, my own solder. We're hoping. And then we'll put the whole thing back together and we'll hope it works. And if it doesn't, oh well. I wasn't using it. I haven't been using it in a while. And it still looks good here. And this is where all the traces run on this side, which is good. I see the traces running there. I have a feeling that scratching up a trace would be a really bad thing. Um, I don't actually know that. I don't know how a circuit bird, circuit, circuit bird, a sor circuit board fully works in that regard. So I can't 100% say that that's what needs to happen here. But I think so. Just touching the tip down here into each one of the holes in order to hopefully melt up enough of the solder to let the switch come through. Because otherwise my next plan, I guess, has to do with touching the heating up the switch pins themselves to push it through in order to melt the solder. And I don't actually know how well that would work. Come on. Just, just melt there. Melt right around there. That one kind of smells burned. This doesn't seem right. None of this seems right for this. It is going on the right way. I made sure of that, which is nice. Yeah, none of this as far as actually getting this through the holes. Wait, wait, if I just wiggle it, if I just do a bit of wiggling. Is the board warped now? Did I heat this too much? I haven't done anything wrong here. I really, really hope not. How can I apply the pressure that needs to be applied to this thing in order to push it in? It's not going to fit like that. is very up above where you can see on the camera, but I'm just trying to get these pins to go in. And they are not going in. I want to play video games, want to go back and play Starfield, want to get this mouse working, I've been putting it off for three years. That's pretty much as far as it ever got was, oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? What's going on here? Oh, is it something I am going to need to fix? Troubleshoot, troubleshoot, troubleshoot. Okay, this is beyond my immediate skill on how to fix. And look up the parts that I need. I looked at this guide years ago. And then saved the switch to a wish list. And I never did anything else about it. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. I think I'm supposed to come at it from the bottom there like that. I'm pretty sure all I need to do is just heat up this right here. So that the solder can flow. 
my pens will go through. Come on, what is up with this? It really doesn't like this. And I can't seem to get the solder to be liquid anymore. I just need it to be heated up enough for those things to focus a little. Just a little bit. Oh! Boom. Okay. All three of those are on there. They're through. Now we touch up with this. My own experience, I'm pretty sure this is of a lower quality and melts at a lower point. Pretty sure. Because I feel like I've done that before. Come on. Come on. We just want to leave a little bit behind here. Yep. Clean it up a little bit. Just, nope. Yep, there we go, and there we go. There we go, that's what we want. We want the solder to stay behind, and then we just kind of touch it up like this. Again, I have no idea if this is a proper practice on how to do this. Well, that's a big, nasty glob of solder on top of there. <laughs> no. Yeah, and my estimates of what's happened here today, they had a much higher quality, duh, than like a, how much did I pay for this? Like 20 bucks on Amazon, cheapo soldering kit, and then the soldering iron that it came with. I mean, not the iron, the uh, solder itself. I think this was at flux here too, aren't I? Where's the little uh oh? Did I drop it? Oh, it was underneath. That's on there. That's not going anywhere. That's the tug test. But I think I can clean it up just a little bit. Especially that first one that has big, big, ugly glob of solder on there. I realize this is not, this definitely uh, more of a personal vlog and excuse to hear me talk than anything useful to watch here because it's not going to come out the way I was hoping. Camera just cannot focus close enough. But hey. You came along for the ride. You are watching me actively ruin almost a three-digit mouse. It's on there. Okay. Okay. It makes a switch. It makes a clicky. It is soldered down. There is but one thing left to do. Try to brush away a little bit here on the board. Let's clean up some of the gunk here. 99% oh, alcohol. And then my brush that I use the alcohol with is this one. Open a little. Tip, tip, tip. Bean, bean, bean. Brush. Clean up the board from just years of use. Towel. Then we can clean up this.
All right. I think I have done the best I can do here. It's ugly. I'm not proud of it. But it's on there. Now we go backwards. And we put away the alcohol before I spill it like I did the other time. Not that long ago, the reason I had, I had pretty much two full bottles of 91 and 99% alcohol for various uses. And then I definitely dropped one all over the place, knocking it over. All right, following the steps backwards. Uh, remove the four pins, which mean, I mean the four screws, which means put the four screws back in. So we are going to line that up. Now they say to put the screws in, but I'm just going to go ahead and connect that to there because I happen to have it ready. The four pins and my screwdriver right here. I keep saying pins, screws, screws, screws. It's the screws. It's Christmas Day, Mr. Scrooge. What? Ah, humbug. Trying to save money and not have a broken mouse. The humbug. There's a two that's there, which means that that's a screw on the outside. Now, the interesting thing about this if you're still watching Aaron 20 minutes into this, is that if this all goes well, and if this is working again, I'm going to have to replace what's on the bottom. The little foot pads here, these are just completely, between me trying to get them up and everything, there's no way that's going to move smoothly. So if I get this done, and if it works, and I'm happy about it, and I don't have the issues anymore, then I'm going to have to spend some more money. <laughs> all right, replace that switch. I've done that. Now this was the wheel. The wheel goes back in here. It doesn't seem to be. Let's clean the wheel up. Put up the brush away. Put one brush away. Just clean up all of this. Nice and clean. This front piece goes in here. And then this one comes here, and I think in order to get that in, I'm going to need to pry this little piece back again. Yep, there we go. That's in. That makes a click. That moves from side to side. In, in, in. Perfect. Okay. Going backwards, the next part was plugging in this piece, which are these little wires right here, into this small one. See if we can get this one. Mm, tweezers to go right back in here. Yep, yep, that's done. You can tuck these cables back under here, I believe, is where they were. Nice and out of the way. Yep, next. Uh, okay, this is going to be interesting and tricky. These are the springs that have to go back. And that small spring, I did not see where it came from fully. I can see it's there, but where did it attach to? The small one went around that, and then the big one went somewhere else. And the guide doesn't show where. So it has to go on like this. Ring goes on here. That way it can latch down to there. Nope, come on. Spring goes on here. Spring. Work with me, spring. Work with me, spring. Spring goes on here. Spring goes on here. There. And that way it goes there. It must let, it must go on this one here. Yeah, it does. Okay. So then this bigger one here goes. What? Oh, okay. Yes. This one here goes. How? Where does it connect to? 
It goes on like that. Does it just go in the wheel? That can't be right. That can't be right. No, it cannot. It cannot be right. It cannot. If that's right, then all it has to do is this right here. And that doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right at all. If that's the case, then all I have to do is put this piece here. No, no, so it's got to go in here first, and then down, and then into these little tracks here. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is... Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, wait, almost. Got it. Yep, there's one side. There's the other. Okay. Ah, I see what it does. Ha! The wheel was springy. The, the wheel was just spinning before. This little thing is a spring here that connects between a little piece of plastic. I know you can't see. I know this doesn't matter, but I'm explaining it because it, this actual spring goes here. And this is a spring between that and then this metal rod. This metal rod goes in the wheel, your scroll wheel, and then clips into two places here. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it actually makes the scroll have a noise and holds it in place. Now, they say the three pin connector. Remove the top housing three pin. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's whoop. Ooh, that's the other. I don't think that's hot anymore. But we're not going to chance it. We pick things up with tweezers. When they're hot, that's turned off. Turn the temperature back down so when I turn it back on. Repair is noble. <laughs> I don't think I've ever looked at the iFixit kit spudger that says that. You can't see. Okay. So now we are connecting the two things back together. This doesn't seem right because this piece still has to go in. Why did they not... Where do they mention that? Ribbon cable. Oh, no, they haven't. Oh, yeah, no, that was part of scroll wheel housing. Oh, I skipped that. Okay. Jumping all over the place. Now we do this part, which is to remove the screw, which means we replace the screw, but only after we put the LED back in there. When the LED goes in, it doesn't show. Crap. But I was trying to pull this thing out, and it wasn't coming out. And this thing tucked up somewhere. Was it just inside of here? Oh, there's two little... Oh, yep, this goes in here like this. Now I see. Yep, 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 follow along, follow along. This is what they want me to do. This has the LEDs for the RGB that is inside the scroll wheel, which I quite like. Yep, there's three little things that go right there. I mean, there's two. And then these cables need to be tucked somewhere. Doesn't show, does it? No, they just kind of sit there. That can't be right. They have to go... These cables... These cables are making me thirsty. Oh, wait. It's crackers. No, it's pretzels. I'm watching Seinfeld. Never saw all of Seinfeld either. Until now. Now I will. Given time. All right. We're just going to put this thing back in here. We're going to get the screw on, and then we're going to worry about the cables. Halfway put the screw on, then move the board so that it fits down in here the way it's supposed to. Finish putting the screw on. Screw that down in there, and then tuck these cables back up here. I don't think they go up. I think they go down. I think they come this way. 
they don't really have a particular place, but I feel like if they're up, then we have a trouble with them being near the switch. I don't want them interfering with the switch capability. Okay, that goes like that. Then we move on to connecting the housing the top back to the bottom. And then we do that by creating this three pin connector right back in here. Which way does it go? It has a track so that you can only put it one way. I appreciate when they do things like that. And then the step before that is the ribbon cable. Well, actually they say the side housing goes next. Side housing is up here. So the side housing goes on something like a this, right? That snaps down into place there. And now we put the ribbon cable on. The ribbon cable should hopefully just kind of click down in place here. I don't know about this style. All the other ribbon cable things that I've done, I know you cannot see what I'm doing here, but if I try to do it like towards the camera so you can see me attaching this ribbon cable, then I won't be able to see what I'm doing. Sorry. This is not meant to be instructional. There are images on the web. Uh, the other ribbon cables that I've had are like a flip lock system. I think it's the best way I can describe that. Yeah, these are not up, are they? So the cable won't go in. That comes up and that comes up and then this comes in here. Very carefully. I need the other tweezers. Where are my other tweezers? I'm going to be looking them right in the face. Oh, I definitely use there they are. Okay. So now this goes here. Yep, that just slides right down in there once those things are popped up. The only trouble I'm really having is the fact that there we go. There's a piece of plastic there as part of the housing thing. Uh, I actually think that can go on there more, can't it? Is it as far down as it goes? We'll see. We'll see. This is the point. Yes, I am at the point where I can go plug it in and see if it works. So, that's where this will end. It's been an hour and a half. We're going to go plug it in. We're going to start the recording at the computer. We're going to go plug it in there. We're going to see if it works. If it works, great. We have a happy ending to this. And if not, then this is the end. And this was been my personal vlog where I very, very little talked about personal things and more worked on this piece of machinery technology that is the Razor Mouse. Oh, I really hope that. Let's go find out.